have you ever been on a quest to find that connection? I think, uh, yeah, I think. Because more and more people I talk to now talk about a point in their lives where either they left work or they went somewhere because they're trying mm. to find mm. the right mm. fit. Have you Deeply. ever? Deeply. I, th I think from the age of about early 20s, I had that itch, that desire to understand more. Um, I was brought up very uh, Church of England in the UK, Church of Uganda here. Okay. Going to church from a very Christian background family, mm -hmm. archbishops and this and that. So I understood all of that, but I needed to find my own expression. Mm -hmm. So I studied everything, looked into everything, um, picked up different things along the way, which makes my practice now. So, for example, I love yoga. Mm -hmm. I do yoga every morning. I feel it connects me to the source of all creation. That's how I feel mm -hmm. about my God. Mm -hmm. And the yoga supports me to do that. But this is ancient Indian wisdom, right? Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's not really about religion, I think. Mm -hmm. I think that quest, that seeking to find alignment, which I think is, is what we're talking about, is beyond religion. And okay. I, I've been on that trip for yeah, the last 20 years. <laughs> So, so yoga is a big part of me. Mm. Even our traditional ways of connecting with the universe, our culture, our heritage was always very much clued into that bigger, bigger sense of us. Mm. Um, so I don't think I really went away anywhere, but I've been constantly going places. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been to ashrams in India. I've been on wellness retreats, I've been on spiritual retreats, I'm on YouTube all the time, I listen to all kinds of motivation and, and spiritual seekers. I'm quite daring, I'll listen to everybody, <laughs> however crazy it sounds. Mm -hmm. um, people who talk about past lives, people who talk about auras and chakras, I love all of that. And actually right now what I'm doing is developing a, a, a program which I want to call Wellness Women's Wellness Weekends, I'm still not quite on it. Or wild Women's Weekends, <laughs> where we would go away and do some personal development training, but also have some uh, physical movement and yoga and meditation. And just for the weekend, just for like two nights, three days, mm -hmm. to, let, um, to let us immerse ourselves, like separate from your life for a bit, busy women that we are. Mm -hmm and just have a few days to connect with yourself and whatever that means to you. Mm. Um, primarily in nature, because I think that's the fastest way to feel that awesomeness. Mm. Um, and yeah, yeah, definitely spirituality. I'm all for it. Okay. <laughs> and your children, you have Jack, Joey and Ruby. Yeah. Your baby. Yes. Uh -huh. Who's taller than me. Yes. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> So, yeah. um, has gr no, you have two men. I was about to say two boys, but they're men, men. right? Two yes. grown men and yes. a young lady. What was yeah. your biggest challenge being a mom or a parent? Oh, boy, where do we the start? Um, in now. How much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think communication. Mm. Communication. I think that um, when they were little, it was easier. And I think when they were little, um, we kind of knew our roles. As they grew, this became tricky. Mm. My sister once said to me, you start as the managing director of your children's lives and then you become the consultant. <laughs> so I, I think that. I'm now at the consultancy phase. Okay. <laughs> they may come and request my expertise, but they won't necessarily take my advice. <laughs> Um, so keeping the communication open, mm -hmm. letting them know that you're for them, mm -hmm. letting them know that it's okay to disagree, that their opinion matters, and that sometimes, um, sometimes it's just the fear you have as a parent. You know, you love them, you're worried of all sorts of things, from the mosquito to the cockroach to the road to the swings, everything um, can worry us as a parent. Mm -hmm. So. Persuading them that when I'm shouting and, you know, stamping and slamming doors, a lot of it is love and a lot of it is my fear mm -hmm. <laughs> for what might happen and feeling that I know best for them. Mm -hmm. 
Um, whereas actually, they're really intelligent human beings. Very intelligent. We need to trust them. And capable. And capable. And capable. And um, because a lot of the conversations I'm having with people now, this generation now, raising young people, that fear you're talking yeah. about of the world is so different yeah. now, the world is such a scary place. Right. Children are being micromanaged yes. and they're being protected, I feel almost, you know, to a fault. Yes. And yet yes. we need them to grow, Yes. be responsible yeah. and bold right. and daring. So right. how do we find? It's trust. Mm -hmm. We have to trust them. You know, I think parents always think the world has changed. My mother will tell me that the world was different in her, in her day. <laughs> it wasn't like that, you know, and people didn't do this and young people didn't do that. Mm. So that's always the case. Um, but I agree, we have cling filmed our children. We've wrapped them up. We've kept them in super clean, super safe, so we think, mm -hmm. environments. But they're curious. We have to build into them that we trust them and let them adventure and expect them to adventure. Um, and I don't know, I mean, it's scary. Mm -hmm. It is scary, but if we don't do that, then they become weak. You know, they can't stand on their legs. They don't know how to survive in the world, how to make some money, how to make choices, mm -hmm. how to, you know, start humble. I think for a lot of children also, um, expectation on them is huge, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, so how do they grow? How do they feel satisfaction? I did this for myself, you know. I, I, I chose to buy this pair of shoes that my mother hates, but it was my money. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> it's my money. It's my which money. Which is a powerful place to come from. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. So I agree, we do, we need to let go. We need to let go. Um, we need to let them fall. Right? I think I've been listening to a lot of motivational speakers who tell us failure is part of the path to success. Because yes. if you don't know how to make a decision, evaluate it, get up, make another decision, then you're not living life. Mm -hmm. You're not living life. You're not going to risk. You're not going to learn. And you're not going to be able to pass on good advice to other people. Mm. Right? Yes. So. Yeah, I mean, it was the biggest challenge, sending my boys across the oceans back to the UK. Um, you know, I tell people jokingly, but it's kind of true. I gave them a one-way ticket. <laughs> I was like, bye boys, off you go. Go figure Make it out. It. Figure it out. <laughs> okay. But it was the best thing I ever did. Mm. It was the best thing. They needed to, they were young men. And, you know, it was beginning to be a thing at home where I had these young lions, you know, in the pride. And as you know, you can't have too many lions in a pride. So mm -hmm. things were beginning to get very intense. Oh. Um, and I was like, no, these young ones have to grow. And find their and own find place. find their way. Mm -hmm. You know, young men can't be clashing heads with their father, with their mother. Mm. You know, when you get to the point, it's like, this is not your house. Oh, we, still, we have people who keep their sons at home until 35. Or... Mm -mm. Mm -mm. In my opinion, that is <laughs> not right. It's not right because, you know, it's their home, mm -hmm. but it's not their house. There's a big difference. Yes. You know, and it'll always be their home. Mm -hmm. But, you know, now when I see my sons, and they, they've now moved to the third flat they're staying, they've been away three years. Um, they're like, look, mom, you know, we've got our own rooms now. We don't have to share anymore. And we have a little garden and we have this because they've had to, you know, build it up for themselves and, and, and feel that pride mm -hmm. for themselves and feel the discomfort of, of not having mommy and daddy there. Yes. But the intense pride mm -hmm. of everybody saying, well done, we're so proud of you. <laughs> So challenging, but I, I would advise it. All parents, let go. You're mm -hmm. not doing them any favors. Okay. You know, you're just trying to delay when you rip off that band-aid. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, I guess it's, it's for the best, really. It really is. Otherwise, you're not going to create adults. Mm -hmm. They remain children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Previously on Crystal One on One. Um, days have changed. Back in the day when I was in school, we had to send the girls letters mm -hmm. to tell them to be at DV8 at 2 p.m. 
on the 28th <laughs> of a certain day. And you know what? You would still go to deviate on that day at 1.45 and wait for 2 p.m. And she would show up. Now? On time. Boom, boom, boom. What's up? <laughs> she blue ticks. If she comes, she comes. If she doesn't. And half the time. <laughs> half the time we're like, oh, I'm running late. I'll be there in 20 Absolutely. minutes. Yeah. As you look back on your journey, um, did you ever find yourself at a crossroads? Pretty much every day. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't no, expecting that. No. <laughs> I think I, there's always choice. Mm. There's always choice. Um, crossroads. Because there's some people who get to certain points in their life and they're stuck. And then that's oh. when the depression sets in. And that's when mm. all the negative, you know, acting out. Mm. Um... I think when I say I'm at a constant crossroads, I feel there's so many things I want to do with my life. Mm -hmm. What should I do now? Should I continue this? Should I do this? Should I do more of that, less of this? I've never been somebody who felt stuck in that way, but definitely the transitional parts of my life as I grew from being a young mom mm -hmm. to being a mother of teenagers to now being, okay, I'm an empty nester now. You know, mm -hmm. this is a different position in my life. Um, I would say a 23-year marriage, that's mm -hmm. been a road. That's definitely been a road um, that shown me the necessity of having independence of thought and of spirit and of not worrying about what people think of you and not taking too much, not being influenced too much, um, even by the person who's right next to you, you know. So that's kind of definitely brought me my challenges where mm -hmm. I've gone deep within myself um, to question and say, well, should I do this? Everybody's telling me not to or my nearest and dearest is telling me, I don't think that's a good idea, honey. And I'm like, <laughs> it is a good idea, honey. And, you know, worrying that this may tear the, 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 the fabric of the relationship. But to be honest and candid, mm -hmm. feeling that it was more important to be myself, and what will happen will happen, you know, That's rather a than for a lot of women. Right? Rather than saying I must preserve my marriage at all costs, I must preserve my place in society at all costs. I'm like, you know what? No, I need to preserve myself at all costs. Mm -hmm. And if that all falls away, then maybe I've grown out of it. Maybe it's not for me now. Mm -hmm. Which is very bold. Um, and I think, I think I just got to the point, Crystal, I was like, I'm too old. I am too old not to do exactly as I want. <laughs> I'm too old not to be happy, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, and I, I don't really mind anymore. So it, it feels risky. Mm -hmm. It feels risky. I'm going to do this anyway. Um, what will people say? What, what will your husband say? What will, uh, you know, what will your family say? I've had a few run-ins with the more conservative members of my family, mm -hmm. especially around music. <laughs> and, uh, you know, feeling a lot of pressure around that. But I would say those are my challenges. Mm. I'm crossroads, trying to make decisions, what's best for my family and what's best for me. Before this whole COVID, I was supposed to be in the UK mm -hmm. um, and starting a, a new life in the UK, oh, career-wise. Yeah, yeah, I was going to take my younger, take Ruby and, and go to, let her go to school. But I was like, well, I'm not going to let her go by herself. She's 15. Mm -hmm. So that meant making a commitment for maybe the next five years, okay. give or take, till she got into university. And I'd, you know, I'd figured it out and I had work and I was going to live in my sister's house. and. I was kind of geared up and I, you know, I'd taken that right turn at that crossroads, mm -hmm. which I never thought I would do. I'm never going back to the UK. I'm never living in the UK. Are you crazy? <laughs> that weather? Oh. <laughs> and yet here I am, you know, thinking about it. Um, mm -hmm. And then COVID and yep. lockdown. So we had to pivot and change again mm -hmm. and now I'm thinking about putting a lot of my coaching business online so that I can be anywhere at any time and you know the another pandemic won't stop me in my tracks mm -hmm. I'm thinking about maybe going back to school so many amazing courses online oh, right, you know, right? Mm -hmm. 
just add on, why not? Quite fancy that whole PhD, quite <laughs> fancy that Dr. Pamela Ray now, why not? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to do that. Okay. I'd like to do that. So I'm, yeah, I think I'm always looking to see which other direction. I think there are always yeah. crossroads, opportunities, um, choices mm. to take. I like that. You said crossroads and opportunities. You can yeah. actually switch the two. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I always tell my coaching clients, it's not just either or, there's also both. Mm. There's a third choice. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you can have both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. You talked about your influences in music, like here, Uganda, but in life, who, who have been your influences, the people that you've looked up to, the people you've learned a lot from? Oh, so many. Um, well, immediately closest to me, my mother. Mm -hmm. My mother is an incredible woman. I've seen a lot of different things in life, whether it's Uganda, whether it's the world. So she's been a major influence. Um, my older sister, tight. Um, my tight group of friends. I have a tight group of, of women, my girls. <laughs> they, they've been really powerful mm. in raising my children. I think we grew up all together and raised our children together. So they've been major. So that's the immediate. Mm -hmm. um, beyond that, out there, mm -hmm. I, I'm always drawn to strong women. Um, all over the world who've been championing human rights, who've been championing um, the right for women to do different things. Whenever I see a woman pilot, you know, Kenya, I always had so many females. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> um, we've had women here, like for example, the late and beloved Sarah and Tyrrell. Incredible. I got to, to meet her and work with her. She was a major influence. Um, Dr. Sylvia Tamale, mm -hmm. amazing as well. So those are sort of immediate people who've inspired me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I, I think those have been major influences and continue to be major influences. Okay. You talked about, you know, you're drawn to a lot of powerful women. And um, right now, the world we're living in is pushing women to be more bold, more daring take on leadership roles, how to, yeah. you know, find their place in the boardroom, or yes. just, yes. yes, what's your advice? What's your advice? Um, advice. Well, as a coach, mm -hmm. I think that it's really important for women to take some time. Take some time for yourself. Mm -hmm. 30 minutes for yourself. Whether it's a beautiful bubble bath, whether it's reading your favorite romantic novel, whether it's taking a walk, be by yourself, right? Um, preferably not with your phone because it's an everyday thing that you're always on and where people can always reach you. So they'll always pop up, they'll always send you a message, they call you. Um, I'm known for not picking up my phone. Everybody <laughs> knows that. And I'm always surprised when they're like, but you didn't answer. I'm like, well, I didn't know you were gonna call me. I was busy. <laughs> You know, I was in the garden. Mm -hmm. You didn't let me know. I'm not, I'm not at your beck and call. Mm. So I think for women, that's really important. We don't do enough of that. Um, because I think if you, if you make time for yourself every day, then you'll hear that quiet voice inside. You'll hear your inspiration. You'll hear your dreams. You'll find out what you need. What do I need right now? What do, what do I need to, to, to self-care? You know, we're always busy with everybody else, all the time. Mm -hmm. You look at these young ladies um, who are taking care of three or four other little brothers and sisters who are expected to cook and clean, who are expected to um, be in that caring role. As little as 12, 13 years of age, you're a young woman, you're taking care of stuff. Um, women have been economists in the family, agronomists in the family, uh, pharmacists in the family, <laughs> doctors in the family. We are the first level of care. Mm. So we have all those hats. We shouldn't think that we're not doing all of that. We're business minded. We are budgeting every day. You know you have that 20K mm -hmm. and it has to see us through the day, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. This one needs diapers, that one needs a bottle of water to go to school, this one's shoes are broken. 
We are creative, we're thinking on our feet. Do you know that women spend 70% of their disposable income on the family, on education, on sanitation? Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. And we are the best bet when it comes to insurance, when it comes to savings, when it comes to repayments. We've got it. So I think we shouldn't think it's something new. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't think of women as needing these skills. Mm -hmm. I think they need time and nurturing for themselves to okay. show up rested. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so important. <laughs> Number one, rested. Okay. Feeling beautiful, mm -hmm. feeling cared for. Yeah, so mm -hmm. yes, carve out time. If you have to get up 30 minutes earlier in the day, do it, you deserve it, mm -hmm. you deserve it. If, it. if it means just locking yourself in the bathroom, because that's the only room that has a door that locks, <laughs> With young children do it yes yes mm -hmm. do it give you 30 minutes is not much mm -hmm. but if you do it every day it counts okay yeah okay. <laughs> thank you so much what a pleasure mm -hmm. i've enjoyed it so much <laughs> i enjoyed having you <laughs>